So you want to learn to code in C Sharp, do you? A bit of Unity, is it? Trying to become a game dev? Well, you have found the right video. Over the next 10 minutes, I will be using pretty pictures and moving words to tantalize and teach you some of the fundamental programming concepts and in so doing, equipping you with some powerful tools for the long and perilous game dev journey before you. I'm actually in the process of making more videos like this for different skill levels covering various topics in programming game dev. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out when they drop. Okay, let's do this. A class can be thought of as a holder, wrapper or container, which contains other code. Within a class, you will find data holders and systems that do things, namely variables and functions. More on those in just a moment. Classes can interact with other classes, accessing and exchanging data, and telling each other to do stuff. When you add a script to a Unity object, Unity automatically creates the class wrapper. Note the public class declaration Unity has added. Any further code you write for this file will go in between these curly braces. Variables are data holders and can contain numbers, words, known as strings, and various other data types. Familiar examples might be a player's name, a player's or enemy's health, the player's score, or even the player itself can be stored as a variable. In C Sharp, variables are referred to as fields, and sometimes properties. Properties also being referred to as accesses, or sometimes getters and setters. As a beginner, you'll no doubt have bigger concerns to contend with. So for the moment, just think of them as variables, data holders with values that can vary. The type of data being stored in a variable must be defined beforehand. Things like int, float, string, list, game object, and many others. This is referred to as a type declaration. You can also think of a variable like a cup. On each cup, you write, or declare, what kind of drink it can contain. Cup 1 can hold only coffee. Cup 2 can hold only lemonade. Much like you don't use a coffee cup for lemonade, you don't want to use a number as a word. So if you declare a variable called health as the type int, which is a whole number, you cannot then change your mind and give it a value of John, which is a string. It needs its own dedicated cup. But then, as you get more proficient, you'll discover things like casting and type conversions, which allow you to perform dark sorcery and change the data type. And with a bit of digital kung fu, I have effectively given myself the name of my health. But let's just stick to the basics for now. Functions, also known as methods are the doers of the programming world. They are like little brains and can do all manner of different things. Things like making a player jump, shooting a bullet, updating a health bar, generating a new level, creating complex AI, or perhaps even ending the free world as we know it, depending on who you speak to. Here is what a basic function in C-sharp looks like. This middle section here is known as the function body. It's where computations, logic, and conditions will reside. You may be familiar with such code. It often contains words like if, else, for, while, and countless other magical words. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. The function is called, or executed, like this. This would then be wrapped in a class, as we described in the first chapter. This example simply writes the phrase, hello world, to the console window a classic starting point for programmers. If you have not yet written a hello world function, I dare say you have not lived. Functions can also be given things they can use. Here we have added a parameter to the function. This means the function will expect to be given a value of the data type string. We are also logging out a phrase which combines the words hello with the player name value. We then pass the function the value it wants through what is called an argument. 
So the parameter is what the function is asking for, and the argument is what it receives. Rather than passing in the name John directly to the function, we can create a variable of the type string and assign it the name John and pass that to the function instead. This is what you call good practice. You can even have multiple parameters to be used together in unique ways. This example here you could expect to see on a game win screen, where the player's name is combined with a score into an on-screen message. Just as functions can be given values, they can also give some back. In C Sharp, the area directly before the function name is allocated to the return type. The return type tells us what type of value a function gives back. Notice here the return type is set to void, which is the default return type in C Sharp and many other languages. So does this mean this function here returns the void of the infinite deep space vacuum? No, void simply means nothing. So this function returns nothing. Let's now look at a basic example of a function which takes a value through its parameter, does a calculation and gives it back, returning a new value based on that calculation. This is pretty much how a calculator works. We give it two numbers to add, say 3,281,532 and 2,036,476. It then returns an answer, 5,318,008, or boobies. Here is a simple example of how that code might look. You will notice we have replaced the word void with int, meaning we want our function to return a whole number. Two parameters, also of the type int, have been added. These two numbers are added together in the body of the function. The answer is then given back or returned by literally writing the word return, then the value. To execute such a function and make use of the return value, we can store the answer the function provides in a new variable called myAnswer. The myAnswer variable is then assigned the function addNumbers. The value of myAnswer will now become the sum of the two arguments passed into the function. We can then log this value out to the console window like so. Now we'll just upload this awesome MMORPG calculator function app to Steam, sit back and wait for good times. Ah, indie dev. Too easy. In C Sharp, variables and functions come in various notable flavors. Public, private, internal, and protected. These are known as access modifiers. Let's see what the official Microsoft documentation can tell us about this. Public. The type or member can be accessed by any other code in the same assembly or another assembly that references it. Okay, okay. Private. The type or member can be accessed only by code in the same class or struct. Hmm. Internal. The type or member can be accessed by any code in the same assembly but not from another assembly. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. Protected. The type or member can be accessed only by code in the same class or in a class that is derived from that class? This stuff does actually make sense, although it's not very digestible for beginners. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to be focusing on the public and private accessor type specifically, as these are the ones you'll be making the most use of in the early phase of learning. In the middle here, we have a class. Let's call it the Party House class. Within this awesome Party House, there are two cool rooms. The Office, which is private, and the Party Room, which is public. The Office can be accessed through the Enter Office function, which is marked with a private accessor. The Party Room can be entered through the Enter Party function, which is marked with a public accessor. Outside the Party House, we have a bunch of different classes. We'll call each individual one a Person class. Being the awesome party house that it is, the people want to get inside, explore the rooms, get drunk and make a big mess. Oh, oh, it's terrible. If a person tries to call the enter office function, the accessor will say, no way, get the hell out, this is private. Don't touch me. You need to leave the property. And only accessible to workers or functions already inside the house. The enter party room function, however, offers public access. No security guard here. <laughs> 
When starting out, you will more than likely make everything public. Because, you know, easy. And who doesn't like open access, right? But you see, that's where the problem lies. You don't want everyone in the city to have a key to your house. You only want to give access to the people, or classes, that need to know. That way, if and when something does go wrong, the problem will be easier to find, as it will be limited to a specific code set. Let's now do a quick recap of what you have learned. Variables hold data and require a data type. Functions are like little brains in your code that do things. They can take values in through what are called arguments, do calculations, and return new values. These functions and variables live inside a class, which can, depending on the level of access, talk to other classes, in its entirety creating a piece of software, maybe even a game. Congratulations, you have officially leveled up. If you enjoyed this video, do please give it a like, and I will see you in the next one.